Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Youth Matters. Uh, in today's show, we are discussing life after university. Um, recent uh, statistics that were published by the Department for Education shows that, you know, in 2016, 87 percent of people who are graduates were employed compared to 70 percent of people who are employed who don't have degrees so you know that tells us that there's a significant difference between those who go to university and get a job and those who don't um, as always we want to hear your views uh, what are your views on university life should with the uh, nine thousand pounds a year on average cost of going to university is it still worth it is it still worth going to university we want to know your views um, if you've got an amazing memory from university that you would like to share with us then please get in touch and tell us assalamu uh, alaikum amra last segment maze amra amra bai bona bai antol ga matimu university ba de life kila bodle kham kila university takhle khamor dai kila preparation khora jay university maze bala jinish ki takhle afnar laboibo khamo gyalle otaloi amra matho takhor mo afnar ar jone experiences takhe te afnar shori koiba amra gorai ba nai email khorba screen maze ase Joining me again on the panel is Adil, uh, who is a postgraduate, and I will be asking you some questions related to that because I think it's important for people to know there is opportunities to study beyond that. Uh, Ashwad, who is a construction uh, management uh, graduate, uh, we look forward to listening to your views. And finally, Mahfuz, who's a medical uh, doctor, Mahfuz, sorry. Uh, who's a medical doctor and is sharing his wisdoms of having been forced to study for five years. No, no, no. So there was clarification that he wasn't forced and this is something he chose to do after his A-level. So thank you uh, for being part of the panel. Um, Adil, I'll go straight on to you. Um, tell me your best memory. Let's try and inspire our watching audience at home. Tell me your best standout memory from university. And remember, we have young children watching. <laughs> Um, I'll focus, my best experience was my master's, uh, I think it was a lot different. Uh, my best memory from my master's degree, I think it was just that day when I, um, the deadline for my dissertation, because that was mm. the last thing left, and I went in early in the morning to the university, had 20,000, well actually more than that, on my USB stick, and I went in, in and I spent hours just reading every word, trying to see if it was perfect, uh, and then I went to the publisher, got it published. Uh, brought two copies back and handed it in and just handing that in putting it through the box knowing that was the last thing I'm thinking did. is that it like is that it? And okay, that, that's and a real feel. It's yeah? a roller coaster of emotions. Okay, yeah. brilliant. Thank you for that. And Brother Ashwad, you know, uh, other than the memories in the pub, which uh, I'm sure it was, <laughs> please, please, tell us, uh, please tell us about your best memory. My best memory um, yeah, it's, it's, this one really stands out, even till this day, sure. it's one of my best memories. Um, basically, there was this, it was contract law I was doing, and I used to always struggle with it, sure. I used to find it difficult. Um, but however, when it came to doing the exams, there was five questions, so I, I got to the second one, I looked at my time, I was like, oh crap, mm. I'm going to get late for Jumma. Sure. I was like, what do I do? And then I remember once uh, I went to a uh, lecture and the speaker was saying, if it's time for Salah, go for Salah. Yeah. Even if it's a, yeah. your exam, have faith. I was like, oh, I'm not good at this though. I, was, I thought, you know, what the hell? Like, I'll go make dua and I'll get some really good marks. Uh, so you have the Allah Hawla approach, yeah? yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, just bear in mind, I did sure. put a lot of hard work into yeah. revision, so I did tie my camels. Uh, I'm not just Allah. saying do it, but you know. Yeah. Uh, so what happened? I'm too excited to know what happened um, at the end. I did, so I have five questions. I did three questions and I, I just thought to myself, I, I, I failed it, I just scraped it. Sure. And I just thought, for, I was finding this difficult anyway. Sure. My other grades were Get us out of the out. suspense, what happened? Um, <laughs> so at the end, when I got my results, um, I actually got a first on that. I got every single... Uh, uh, Mashallah. Every, uh, the first three, three questions you got right? Yeah, first three I got uh, like 95, one of them I got 100, one Mashallah. of them 90. Mashallah. I was thinking... Wow, we, we, this we, we, is we might have to check the actual uh, <laughs> figures because yeah. we have a lot of people coming on TV saying a lot of things, <laughs> but I'm sure it's true. But uh, I don't advise that to everyone. Okay. Tie your yeah. camels. No, that's a really good story. Thank you for that. And Math with Zula, how did you beat that? Um, uh, I don't think I can well, beat that to oh. be honest. For me, it's probably because um, I've been in university for numerous years. I think the best best feeling was when I opened my results for my final oh, exam, okay. final everything, mm. and I had my. Um, 
mum by the side praying and my grand coming into the room, my brother, everyone around me and just saying, Amma mi fali laisi, just Amma mm. daddy. Yeah. And that, those words literally, to this day, I can like, everyone was in tears and that feeling that you've accomplished something, I don't think anything can beat that for me. Mashallah, that's really touching. Uh, yeah, but you still don't beat Bala. No, bro, uh, you smashed uh, it, bro. Okay. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a short video uh, talking about how people have pursued different uh, career pathways after university. So stay with us. After I graduate, I plan to pursue a career in academia, so after my undergraduate degree, I'll be looking to do a master's degree. I'd love to work in either the media or sort of marketing industries, particularly digital marketing. I'd like to work for the Government Operational Research Service. I hope to become a maths specialist and then go on to help design the maths curriculum for primary schools throughout Wales. I want to work in communities that um, suffer from obesity and income-related health problems. I plan to look um, for employment straight away in the events industry whether or not be in the local area or across the country or even around the world. With textiles, I'd like to go into play therapy. I want to go into radio broadcasting, which I feel my degree and the extracurricular stuff will be perfect for. My degree programme has given me the skills necessary. There's been a lot of modules that have been relevant. I've kind of like tailored my degree to what I want to do in life. What I want to do is quite niche. The university's got lots of links with different government departments. We've got the experience from having external industry come in and talk to us and make us more more aware. Lecturers has helped me network enough to make the connections that I need to get into that career. Especially in the current job market where a lot of the top jobs they just won't even consider your application unless you have a degree of some kind. And uh, hopefully somebody will give me a job. So that was a short video just kind of uh, talk, people talking about what they did post uh, graduating from university and uh, you know we'd love to hear from you you know what is your standout memory from university and please you know inspire us and the uh, millions watching at home. Uh, we've got a caller on the line. Assalamu alaikum caller. Um, wa alaikum salam. Uh, how would you uh, yeah so sister what was your best memory of life at university? Um, I actually have a question for the panel. Oh okay go ahead. Um, so as Bengali, I mean, as Bengali, our parents obviously feel like, you know, uni is plain sailing. It's probably three years, the degree is done, you know, you're finished. But would the panel um, want to talk about any struggles they've actually faced during university? Okay, that's a really good question. Sister, have you gone to university yourself? Have you gone through um, the... I, I have, yes. Okay, and what is I'm your one standout, uh, you know, memory, a brief memory that you have? What's the best memory? Um, honestly, I would say um, the friends you make in the prayer room. That's a really good... It's quite good... a nice community feeling there. Yeah, are you saying that because you're still in touch with people? Um, yes. Who go to the prayer room, who went to the <laughs> prayer room. Okay, that's a safe bet. Yeah. All right, thank you, sister, for that. Um, so the sister speaks about some of the challenges. We will actually uh, speak about that. Um, you know, uh, Mafuz, you know, starting with you, what, what do you think is, uh, is a challenge that maybe people don't speak about, some of the challenges at university? It's like um, when there's a certain perception that once you, when people are going to university, that you're going to pass every single year. You're not going to fail anything. Mm. You're not going to... Um, get less marks in something. But the truth is, every single student who's gone to university has had a struggle. Sometimes it's struggling with a um, certain topic, sometimes it's a, it's a year, and sometimes even st struggling with the university. That for a person that comes to mind is that, again, like I mentioned earlier that I went into university not really struggling as much. But when I went into mm. university, I was with uh, people who are, have studied in private schools, grammar schools. Mm. I was of the handful that went to a state school and had the upbringing in entire hamlets. So first struggle for me was to actually speak to them properly because I had a sl proper East London slang and I remember speaking to a student and, he's, and I was speaking away and I was talking to him da -da -da -da, and he could turn and go, bro, I'll be honest with you, I couldn't understand one word you said. Mm. That's when it hit me, right, okay, this is going to be a struggle. <laughs> but throughout the years I've been in university, I've failed so many times. Sure, and sure. I've come to come so close into getting kicked out of med school at some point. Mm. Sure. And the admin team have turned around to me and said, there's no way you're passing this. 
those words, whenever I hear that, that just fight, gives me the fucking that, spirit to go on. That wasn't because of the late night parties, Mafas. <laughs> Maybe. No. Okay. But Mafas, tell me this. Mashallah, you know, you're an inspiration for, for us all. And someone who's gone through the struggles of um, growing up in a deprived area. And, but did that not, for, uh, you know, did that not give you much more of a satisfaction that you were now rubbing shoulders with people who had had the best uh, foundation, yeah. best kind of education available to them, yeah. and yet you were, you were there with them? Yeah, definitely. It's just, it's, it, you look at them and you're thinking, wow, you had this upbringing, your dad's a doctor, your dad's a consultant, surgeon, whatnot, you're talking about your experiences. I didn't have that, but alhamdulillah, I'm mm. in the same position you were. Mm. And sorry, just going back to the struggle aspect of it, um, even in living in Tahamlets, Hamlets, you have certain struggles as well. Yeah. And I personally believe if in university you never fail, then you haven't been to university. Yeah. Because through failure, you grow into being this strong, independent person that is able to take on anything. And that characteristic that you gain from university is something that, you, that will be treasured later on in life mm -hmm. when you go into the workplace. Sure. Where firstly, you might not get a job. That struggle in itself that, mm -hmm. oh my God, I'm not, I haven't got a job. You'll be able to fight that when you mm -hmm. go into the workplace that struggle as in doing your job, you'll be able to fight that and you only get stronger. So sure. I personally believe failure is the best thing that can happen to you in university. Okay, um, thank you Mahfuz for that. Um, Adil, um, what I want to know is we spoke about obviously the best memory, you know, what is your memory from university that you want to forget? That I want to forget? Yeah, what's the one memory that you think, you know, well, I think don't I want to remind myself. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry? I think I've forgotten it already. Um, it's, uh, you repressed it, yeah, it's been that yeah. bad. <laughs> no, but something that, you know, it could be something as small as, you know, um, I don't know, handing in your, univer you know, missing a deadline. That could be a memory that you just think, why did I risk that? You know, something, what's, what's the one thing that you just think to yourself, oh, I wish I didn't do that? Um, so, you know, once again, we're trying to advise people at home so that they don't do that as well. It could be something funny as well, it's fine. Yeah? Um, I think actually... Uh, but that's what you can come up with another creative... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah very well. I think timekeeping was... Honest was, one, please, this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you story think of one? Uh, no, timekeeping. Uh, there's a story actually. Okay. Um, once, um, you know, I was, in my undergrad, I was an absolute mess uh, yeah. going to first and second year. I didn't, I didn't care really, to be honest. And it's a bad thing. So what, if you're watching, Pit, care. You know, I make mean, sure you care. Make sure you care and make yeah. sure you turn up on classes for those 9 a.m. starts and stuff. Get in there. Um, but um, I remember once I was in second year, and this is so embarrassing. I was in law school, and there was a lot. Of, so you got lectures and tutorials, right? Mm. Tutorials are where you sort of consolidate what you've learned. Um, I was so bad at timekeeping, um, and I, I learned it the hard way. I think there was a, there was a tutorial on it at nine o'clock, and I think I got to the uni at about five past nine ish, right? Uh, this is in second year, right? And then I walked in and I didn't know what room I was supposed to be in, right? So I guessed, right? And I guessed, open the door and it's, it's law, everyone's serious. It was like, you know what I mean? Mm. People are analyzing really difficult, mm. like arguments and stuff. And uh, I walked in and I didn't even, I kept my head down. I was like, oh, I'm not, you know what I mean? I didn't even apologize, nothing, because they were quite strict like that. I walked in, pulled the seat out, sat down and uh, everyone's looking at me. And I'm like, why, why is everyone looking at me? And you know what I mean? It's, it's the morning as well. And then I looked up and I was like, oh, I was in a first year class, sitting there. <laughs> Everyone was like, who's this guy? And I'm like, what class am I in? <laughs> and then, and the professor, he just kept talking. He kept, you know, going through that's the answers. Right. And I'm like, oh my God. And then I didn't know what to do. So that's a, definitely a memory to forget. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Brother Ashwad, uh, very briefly, very briefly, if you could tell us, you know, what's the one memory at university uh, that you want to forget about? <laughs> You can't. You've had such good memories, mashallah. Yeah, <laughs> all the memories have been brilliant. I don't know. I don't, um, well, I'll come back to you then. I'll go to Mafus. You can do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. But um, <laughs> the only I don't know. The only thing that kind of gets pops out to me is once uh, you know when you just before you're uh, starting to pray and there's like a band of brothers and they're pushing each other. Go pray. Go pray. Yeah. Go on. You lead it. You, you lead, lead it. Yeah. No. 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 And I never used to push anyone because I always knew m back then my tajri yeah. is like rubbish. Yeah. Trust me, you don't want me to lead. So I never used to push anyone if they said, Nah, don't, 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 don't. So. This one brother, he really gave me a hard push. <laughs> I went stumbling to the front. <laughs> How do I go back now? Is it? They would. Someone already started. They come up like, yeah, <laughs> someone. So it's one of those, uh, it was Maghrib, so it's not even, I could be silent. So I started reading. <laughs> you didn't do the Maghrib prayer inside. <laughs> <laughs> did you? You're gonna die. You didn't do that, did you? <laughs> that did Because I know but. people who have done that. <laughs> <laughs> that did happen, but anyway. But you uh, learned, but I, I, 
Did they have to repeat their prayers after? <laughs> um, they, I think they should have because my tajweed was really bad. Cause, uh, okay. We finished Salah and then my brother comes up to me and goes to me, Bro, you, you really need to fix the Tedri. I'm like, tell me about it. But, uh, yeah, and then I just ran out. Literally. I, I, I think, do you know what, brother? <laughs> the last so, time you need so, to so, <laughs> Maybe. So, I, th I think so for you. Like, you've given the best memory and the worst memory. And, you know, I really appreciate your honesty. Thank you for that. Mahfuz, I don't think you're going to beat that. But uh, I don't think what's I the one, one memory that... One memory that uh, strikes out uh, to me it was uh, first year, Freshers' Fair. Going in, going to the different society, signing up to literally everything to the extent where someone was offering free Nando's, mm. and it was actually a clubbing society. So I was in the like, should I should I just sign up? Put my email down. They email me, then I just unsubscribe for the free Nando's chicken. Yeah. <laughs> and as an eighteen-year-old, you're like free Nando's chicken. So I signed yeah. up, and um, yeah, I, I used to That's get emails, so I deleted that email yeah. because I was checking though. Okay, we'll have to check once again whether we did that intentionally or whether it was yeah. for the Okay, but thank you for being honest. Uh, the next one is uh, your best university professor and why? Because people always speak about their professors and sometimes. I want a really brief answer because we've got quite a lot of questions that I want to get through to give the best experience for people watching at home. So really quickly, you know, your best um, professor and why? Very briefly. Professor Guy, um, he marked my dissertation. He took over. Um, I, I put forward a really strong uh, you know, title for my dissertation, and it was so big that I ended up getting the head of the department of management. This guy's like mm. one of the top guys, and he was so strict. I was like, mate, how am I going to work with you? Right? Mm. We just clashed, and I, I very quickly realized that it wasn't going to work. So I went to Professor Guy. He said, listen, I'm more than happy to help, and it turned out to be one of the best dissertations um, at the mm, university. Yeah. So, under so, so not to underestimate, uh, because we're going to now focus on, um, you know, I think jokes aside. Uh, there are a lot of people who are probably in two minds as to whether they want to go to university or not. And, uh, you know, how do we, Mahfouj, I'll start with you. How do you choose a good university? Um, I think the more important question is how do you choose the best course? As in, different universities offer the same course. But what you want to do is look into the specific course they're offering in that specific university because there's sometimes things differ in terms of little um, modules or um, the different experiences you're going to gain. So I say look into that and also look into what you have for as a vision in your life sure. and to just see if it fits with the course you want to go into university you want to go as sure. well. Thank you. And Brother Ashbad, you know, what's your advice for people who have graduated but they can't find a job? Really briefly. Stay patient. Keep trying. Um, everyone goes through that phase. I went through that phase. Um, you, if you have contacts, mm. use it. Uh, Where would you look? Say if, you're, uh, if you want to look for jobs, give us some sites or some uh, publications. At the moment, I will say be active on LinkedIn. Okay. LinkedIn is very useful. Um, also, if, if you are really struggling, try to do some work experience in the field that you are looking to go into. Or if you don't find the role you want to do, um, maybe there might be another role that's available in the same industry or same field. Just go in there, do it. Just get your foot in there. That's because really with me, what happened is when I graduated, it was pretty difficult getting a job. But um, the, the, there wasn't many. Gra they weren't taking many graduates on when I graduated, and for, I was very fortunate. Very fortunate. Mm. I'm so grateful Mashallah. that my eldest brother helped me. Um, he got. Uh, he had contacts. This was before LinkedIn. LinkedIn sure. didn't exist. Yeah. So my brother was my LinkedIn. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so uh, he you. he actually f f helped me get a job. Um, Unfortunately, that was like in Manchester, I think in Coventry. I didn't enjoy it staying away after three months. So I came back and I, I, didn't, I was on Job Seekers Announce for about a month. And yeah, I didn't enjoy that. But at the same time, I was looking. Sure. Um, and then I found another job. It's, it wasn't quantity surveying, though. Yeah. And it wasn't a graduate uh, scheme. Uh, scheme. It wasn't even a trainee scheme. It was a um, accounts clerk. Um, and it's, but it's that obviously helped you to come to where you are now. Yeah, yeah but okay. it was in the Thank same you. industry. And then okay. eventually, once I got my foot in, I spoke to the managers and then I found my way Thank to you. where I am That's today. That's really good advice. Um, Adil, uh, I'm going to speak to you about, you know, why, you know, you've done a postgraduate qualification. You know, there might be people out there who are in two minds. Do I do it? Do I not do it? What's, what would be your advice? I asked someone whether I should do a master's before I did it, obviously. I asked quite a few people. Um, and someone, I asked uh, quite a good um, individual, he's a public figure from uh, Newcastle. And he said, listen, it's very, very niche. When you do a master's, you're actually focusing on a very, 
you know, think about a module you, that you've done in your undergraduate degree. You're looking at that module over like a year, right? And it's going to get really, really in depth. Um, and, and that really that helped me a lot. Um, and the second thing that helped me was that I sort of knew what I would do with that degree afterwards. Um, so I don't just do it for the sake of a degree. Um, and sure. you really need to be, you know, you really need to be into education and really into studying to be able to get through a master's or a postgraduate degree like that. Um, and look, uh, and get it done as soon as possible after your undergraduate, after you graduated. So I took, I took a year out before I started my master's. And I think that was the perfect sort of time for me to get right back into studies and get back into just the university lifestyle again. Um, if you delay it, some people do it in their 30s, 40s. Mm. That can be good, um, but some That's people fine. struggle getting back into Thank you. Uh, studying. Thank you. And uh, Mahfouz, uh, what, what is it that you're doing now? You know, post uh, having graduated. So um, with medicine, you kind of fall into the system, NHS system, and you get a job straight away. So right now, I'm in, I'm working as a doctor in Ealing Hospital, as a FY1. Sure. And um, so I'm literally doing. How places. how is it, Mahfouz? You know, when you're when you're starting to become a doctor, obviously you do placements. How is what you did during your placements different to what you're doing right now? Because you were saving lives yeah. even then, right? Um, <laughs> not to that extent. I mean, you do make a difference as a medical student, as in the interactions you have with patients and the, the, you talk to them and you help mm. the doctors there. But once you go into becoming a FI1, a junior doctor, you lose a certain safety net sure. and you have more responsibilities. You have prescribing powers, for instance, where if you're sometimes at night, you're on call and you're like the only doctor on the wards. So it's a, if there's an no emergency, you're called yeah. and you have to go and sort that out. And then you have the aspect of talking to other family members who are really worried about the loved ones. Of course, Every of course. single word you say, they hold on to that. So okay. if you give false hope, they're going to hold on to that. Mm. And the other thing of that responsibility on your shoulder when you're treating a patient, um, one mistake could be the end of someone's life. Okay. And that is just a domino effect with the family. So all that responsibility, you can never prepare for sure. and something you just have to take on. Thank you, Mahfouj. Now, that's the end of the show. You know, uh, my thanks to our panel members, also people who have phoned in and emailed as well. Um, just to summarise, I think it's, it's, it's obvious, you know, the people who have been on the panel today, they've spoken about their many experiences, good and bad, at university. But I think what's clear is, you know, the richness of life skills and knowledge that you pick up when you go to university. And despite, you know, such a hefty debt at the end of it, like one of our guests was saying, you know, you have to weigh out the balance. You have to balance whether that will then help you get to where you want to pursue in your future career and your ambition. So, you know, please do research. And like the advice that was given, research what you're going to study before you commit to it, because a three or a five year degree is a very long time. Uh, do, uh, you know, keep in touch with us via email and, uh, you know, do stay, watch the Youth Matters Facebook page and, you know, all the updates there. And uh, and thank you uh, for tuning in today. Asalaamu Alaikum.